Hi, and welcome to TauofColorGrading.com. My name is Patrick Inhofer, and this is a video quick tip on controlling magic bullet looks. I was on a podcast uh, earlier this week at, and you can find it at 16by9cinema.com, and uh, you click under podcast, and I believe I'm show number 40. And one of, the, one of the things we started discussing was magic bullet looks. And, you know, as a, as a colorist, I'm often asked, well, do you use looks? And my answer is, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's a tool. Why not? And it's a really good one and has a great interface and I really enjoy it. Why wouldn't I use looks? But there's a problem. And uh, Chris Fenwick, one of the co-hosts, pointed out how difficult it is if you run a Kona card or a Decklink card or you're running out of Matrox there's a thing in Final Cut where you can't see the, the result of what you're doing on the outputs of those cards. So if you're using a broadcast monitor, you can't see what you're doing until you're all done. And I'll show you what I mean right now. So I've got this clip here. This is from a, uh, a short horror film directed by uh, Tomac Zapante called Confined. And... Here's what the what the what it originally looked like. Uh, nope, that's not it. That's the before, and we you can see that it's it's actually a nice looking image, and it's got kind of this uh, this very warm kind of look to it. And normally that this would be a really great starting point, except if I switch back to Final Cut, this is the original the first image we ended up working with and this set the look for the entire film and we're going for a very kind of chocolatey look for this film and so when you look at this original image it's kind of halfway already there and we want this to be completely different this is kind of like a dream sequence and we wanted to go in a different direction on the color palette so we decided to push it blue and we wanted a kind of dreamy look so coming out of color this is what I came up with this look here and I was happy with it but it wasn't interesting enough to me you know we we definitely cooled it down if you take a look at it against you know it, it, it offsets it very nicely so as we move from from this kind of look into this look it's clearly distinct but I wanted something even more ethereal to it and magic bullet looks is a perfect opportunity to come up with something now i've got no light factory on here which is also put out by um red giant software and we're going to get to that in a moment but let's start and let's apply magic bullet looks and you'll see the problem that chris pointed out so here's the beautiful interface from magic bullet looks and here's the thing. If you were looking at my external monitor, if I come in here and pop up a look, let's go with basic warm, it's not updating my external monitor. So let's assume for a moment that I really liked this look. I, can't, I can make adjustments to it, but I'm never quite sure what the final look is actually going to look like until I press OK. Now it updates in my viewer, in my canvas, and now it updates on my external monitor. And I can tell you just looking at my external monitor here, you can't see it, but uh, my external monitor, it's brighter, it's contrastier, and it's a little more yellow. This looks a little flatter to me on this screen than it does on my external monitor. So this feels a little flat. I'd be tempted in here to maybe you know, pull up these levels a little bit. But then as I do that and click OK, it's looking different on my external monitor. And so what ends up happening is you run into this thing where you keep making these tiny little tweaks and it becomes difficult to control. So let's do this. So let's pull up the looks drawer. And one of the things I love about the looks tray where you have all your, all of these presets. And let's twirl these up so you can see that, you know, they've got these different, Presets from stock emulsions to fusion, black and white, uh, 
horror. Let's take a look at horror. It's a horror film. And these are way too blown out. And one of the nice things is, is I can see how these presets will interact with my image. You know, so if I were to go to a different shot, uh, these would update to that other shot. And I can tell that these horror looks, while they are horror looks, are not what I'm going for. I'm probably going for more of a, a diffusion. Let's take a look at this. That's a little too... Uh, there's too much diffusion. Yeah, nope, I don't want that. I'm taking a little basic look. That's actually getting a little closer, I think, to what I'm looking for. You know, we do want something a little more blue. Let's scroll down to some of these music video looks. Coolish alternate. Yeah, it's not bright enough. Although I could fix that, and I will, you know, because I look at these presets as starting points. And the whole idea is to get you in the ballpark. So what I'm looking to do, and the way I usually work is I'll just swing all these down. And now I'm just going to take a quick scan through here and figure out what seems to get me close to where something that appeals to me. Yeah, that doesn't quite. Echo blue. You know, that might be all right. That might get me, that, that's, I think that's a good starting point. And you can see there's a lot going on here. Let's just turn this whole panel. Okay, so that's my original. And then that's uh, this effect applied. And what I would normally do is I'd come in here and I'd start turning off and figuring out, you know, what's doing something that I like, what's not. And I'd start adjusting these I think I'm gonna keep this all right I think this is a decent starting point I'll click OK now here's the thing let's say I decide that I generally like this look and here's the image without the look and here it is with it let's say I generally decide I like this look and it's put me in the blues that I want, but I think maybe it's a little too dark and I like it a little more bloomy. Uh, I could come back into looks and you know I could start playing with curves in here and I can start brightening this up, start blowing some of this stuff out. All right, and now I've just made a tweak. But now let's say I decided I really like that tweak except my brights are too bright. And they look okay here, but, they don't, but they're too bright on my external monitor. What am I going to do? Because every time I bounce into here, I can't see my external monitor anymore. Here's the solution that I've come up with, which is... to add the three-way color corrector, put it before Magic Bullet looks. And now... I can make adjustments to my overall picture. I can drop my brights. I can lift my midtones. And I can adjust my shadows to get me, while I'm looking at my broadcast monitor, this is updating live as I'm doing this. And now I can come in here and I have real time control. Magic Bullet Looks is doing all this nifty stuff that I want it to, but the stuff that it's hardest to control when you're looking at an external monitor. I'm not asking it to do. You know, I'm using it for what it's good at, and then I'm bouncing out of it, adding the three-way color corrector before it to help me control my image, and I'm doing it in real time. So now I've gone from this look to this one, and let's assume for a moment that this is exactly what my client's looking for now. Fantastic. All right. So this is a great way of controlling Magic Bullet looks working in real time if you're outputting to a broadcast monitor using something like a Denk Link, a Deck Link, a Kona 3, um, you know, Matrox, whatever have you. When I actually did this, and I, I'll take this opportunity to take a look at Null Light Factory because I love Null for stuff like this too. And I really like pairing Null with looks because I can go into Null Light Factory. And in, in a Null Light Factory, you've got the regular one and the easy one. If you apply the easy one, uh, 
you've got these flare types and you can select, you know, like a warm sun flare and, and that's all fine, but they always feel like a preset. You know, it's like that. It, it's like the, um, <laughs> there's this transition on, on an Avid. That's like this flare transition that I've, I've been seeing for the last 10 years and no one ever adjusts the preset. They just throw it on and they use it and it drives me nuts. I can't stand that. And, and so as much, as much as I like, uh, these, uh, you know, I'm, I, I don't use them. So I prefer not to use the factory easy. I like going to the null light factory proper. And what I can do is go into options and let's turn these off because what you can do is you can add all of these individual elements and then you have control over each individual element. So, you know, I'm adjusting in this fan, how many of these points of lights I have. I'm adjusting how bright or not it is. You know, I've got all of these adjustments that I can make to really customize this. And then I can come in here and go to the global and, and I can, you know, you know, let's go to the disk and let's say we don't want blue out of green. We want blue. Okay, purple works for me. But you know what? All of a sudden, yeah, I don't like that star filter. And you know what? I don't like that gold blow. Yeah, there we go. That's exactly what I want. Assume for a moment. I click OK. And now I've got this applied onto here. And what I ended up doing on this actual shot is something similar to this where all I used was this poly spread and I use this ellipse and I use this ellipse to really kind of give me this dreamy look and then I have this little poly spread right here and what happened is as she we go to a close-up now and I can turn on the light factory here and now I've got this poly spread right here that actually cuts kind of cuts between these two and adds a ton of interest and what I could do is on this shot, take these two filters, drag them down, and now I've got this look matching. And what I actually ended up doing is I don't need as much of this flare here. So then I can come up into Null Light Factory. I ended up turning off the flare. And then on her close-up, i got an old light factory on there. And now I've got flare, but none of that, uh, none of the squares. And I can take this, drop my three-way color corrector. And, now, and imagine for a moment that I don't like how it affects her face. Just in terms of the overall like brightness, I can just come in here and drag this down. And now I've got you know, no light factory doing its thing. I've got magic bullet looks doing its thing. And in between, I've got the three-way color corrector that allows me to make, you know, these little changes looking at my external monitor without a problem. That is my towofcolorgrading.com video quick tip on controlling magic bullet looks. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, feel free to leave comments. Talk to you soon.